Everyone has those apps that they just have to have. Whether it's Adobe or Microsoft Word or whatever, everyone has applications that you have to have in order to actually either do your job or be productive or whatever. And I'm no different. Just because I use Linux doesn't mean that I don't have applications that I rely on. And I think most people who use Linux are also just like that. They've just had to find different applications than what you would expect from a Windows or a Mac user. So what I thought I would do today is talk about five of the applications that I just couldn't live without. Now, that being said, and we all admit that that's probably a little bit of hyperbole, I understand that there are alternatives to the applications that I'm going to list out today, but I wouldn't be as happy with the alternatives as I am with the ones that I actually use. So let's go ahead and jump into and let me show you a few of the apps that I just feel like I couldn't live without. So the first one on the list is Rofi. So this doesn't actually seem like a, an application that you would rely on. It's just a launcher, right? It's not really anything special. There's hundreds of different launchers out there. There's definitely D menu that looks like this. I mean, obviously in the grand scheme of things, a launcher isn't that spectacular, but I use Rofi all the time and it's not just for launching programs. I also use it for emojis. I use it for the clipboard. I use it for bookmarks. I use it to go through all of my configuration files. I use it to search the web and different websites. So I mean, I use Rofi all the time. And yes, it also launches programs, but I probably open this thing up 16 to 25 times an hour, as random as those numbers seem. But I open it up all the time and it just saves me a ton of time and I understand you, everything you can do in Rofi you can also do in DMenu but I don't want to have to deal with patching you know my launcher I just want it to have all the features that I need it to have and in this case Rofi does I don't have to go through and patch it to make it in the center I don't have to patch it to change the font or any of that any of that kind of stuff so Rofi is my Go to launcher, and like I said, it's probably the application that I actually use most outside of maybe the browser. So, Rofi is the first one on the list. The second one is called VimWiki. So, I've talked about VimWiki before, and I don't use it as much as I want to use it. So, I've just started kind of transitioning from using Zim over to using VimWiki, but I just love being able to organize my notes by associating them with different linked pages. So it's kind of like a hierarchy of like notes and stuff. So you have a top tier and then you can just kind of drill down into those categories or whatever and it can go as deep as you want. Now I have discovered that there are some things that I don't like about Wimwiki. For example, if I have two different links here. And inside of those links, they have similar uh, named links as well. So let's just say I had these two categories here. And then inside each of those, I had a category for June. And it was labeled the exact same way. It actually would only allow me to create one of those, even though they're technically in different positions, you know, paths or whatever. It's really weird. That's about the only thing I've found on VimWiki that I don't like over Zim. And but I like the fact that VimWiki is in the terminal and it just kind of fits in with the rest of my workflow. So I've slowly begun to transition to using VimWiki more. I don't use it to its full potential right now, but I'm just like I said, I'm slowly getting to the point where I'm going to be using it more and more for my daily workflow. So that is VimWiki. It's uh, basically just a, a note taking app for me. The third one is OBS. And I'm actually using OBS to record right now, so that's why you get this fancy, you know, mirror effect or whatever. Without OBS, I probably wouldn't be still be doing this channel. When I first started the Linux Cast channel and started doing actual videos instead of just the podcast, I used Simple Screen Recorder. Simple Screen Recorder is fine, but it doesn't have a ton of features. It just records your screen, right? And I wanted to be able to do more, so I. I wanted to be able to put a camera on there. I wanted to be able to have transitions and stuff. So if I wanted to, you know, change, you know, to a different scene or whatever, it would go through and you know, do a fancy transition. 
I wanted to be able to add different sources and stuff like that. And it's a little bit harder to do in simple screen recorder because it's so simple. So OBS is fantastic. Now, I'm not a power user of OBS by any means. The most complicated thing I do is record the Linux cast, which is the actual podcast. And that entails taking video from Discord and transforming it so that, you know, the things are side by side. And even that's not the most complicated thing you can do. Uh, I would love to find a alternatives to Discord where I could actually have the feeds of the video of Tyler and I come directly into OBS instead of having to basically screen capture the Discord video feed. But I haven't been able to find one that I actually am capable of using yet. But OBS itself is just fantastic and I probably, like I said, would not be able to do the channel without it. The next one on the list is called a horrible name. It's called NCMPCPP. I don't know why they decided to call it that name. I'm sure it stands for something. I don't know what it is. No one knows what it is unless you actually go to their GitHub and look it up. I, uh, it's it's a horrible name. But basically what this is, is a music player. And I've talked before about how I kind of get music from weird places. So I use Spotify on my phone. And... I like Spotify a lot. It has all my playlists and stuff in it for the last probably close to 10 years at this point. You know, so it's it's very important to me on my phone. But I don't enjoy Spotify nearly as much on the desktop. And most of the reason why is because the native application is trash. It's just a resource hogging piece of garbage. And the terminal applications that they have aren't all that great. Now... NC Spot is pretty good, but it doesn't allow you to actually grab out any information out of it so you can display it in a now playing bar or whatever. So that's a problem for me. I like to be able to see the song that I have playing up in the, you know, in my bar and NC Spot won't do that. So I use a combination of MPD and NC MPC PP uh, <laughs> uh, in order to play music on my desktop. And I love this thing. It's I, I have it playing all the time in the background while I'm doing, you know, my real job. And it's just, it's really good. It does a ton of different things. So, you know, you can search, you can go through and edit tags and so on and so forth. Edit playlists and all that stuff. And, you know, it just does a really, really nice job of being a music player in the terminal. Now, I understand there are other music players that are just as good or better than this. This is just the one that I have invested myself in. So it's one of my most used applications. So the last one on the list is called Flameshot. Now this is actually a fairly new discovery even though the application itself has been around for a long time. But I take a ton of screenshots whether it's for you know the channel or for my work or whatever. I take a ton of screenshots so much so that I have it bound to a key. Right, and for the for many many years, I used the XFC screenshot tool. It's very simple, you know. There's nothing to it. It's just take a screenshot. It's all it does, and it worked for me for for many many years. But then I found Flameshot, and it is just so good. So if I go through and activate Flameshot here and take a screenshot of this terminal. I can resize it after the fact, which I just adore. I mean, it's just so good. Because, I mean, how many times have you taken a screenshot and then realized that you've cut off part of what you're trying to capture? This is no longer a problem because you can go through and alter this as much as you want until you save it. And you can go through and do a ton of stuff, you know, before you've, you save it. You can add, you know, numbers. You can add text. You, you can draw on it. You can copy it you can share it from here you can do just a ton of stuff right from this screen here and then all you got to do is hit the save button you know and then save it wherever and that's flame shot i mean it's, it's just so powerful and especially when i'm doing something like creating a screenshot for my work or whatever and i can go through and just annotate that screenshot however i want 
without actually having to have another tool. Because before, what I'd have to do is take the screenshot with the XFC screenshot tool and then take it into like something like GIMP or something in order to annotate it. That's a really pa big pain in the ass. It's really nice that Flameshot just does all this stuff for me. Okay, so those are the top five. Now, I do have a application bonus pick for you. This is number six, and the reason why I don't have it in the, t you know, in the higher up in the list, or and and the reason why I'm calling it a bonus pick is because I've only just started using it. I, I haven't used it for very long. But the application I'm talking about is called Gitkraken. Now, Gitkraken looks like this. And basically what Gitkraken is, is a GUI for Git. And I'm horrendous with Git commands. I don't know half of them. 90% of the times the ones that I do know I forget and moreover I've never quite gotten the hang of actually going through and Setting up SSH in order to get into Git from the terminal It's not something that I've ever been able to really successfully do. I've done it like one or two times. It's not something that I'm Actively interested in doing again because it just feels overly complicated to me and uh, Everyone knows that I would prefer to do this in the terminal, and there is a TUI like, version of this. It's called Lazy Git. It's good. It doesn't really work for me, but this GUI version is just, so far, just been spectacular in terms of the things that I needed to do. Now, granted, the things I need to do are very simple, and this is a much more powerful application than what I'm using it for, because it will... It will it will let you pretty much do anything you can do with Git, and it allows you to manipulate your Git repositories pretty much in any way you could possibly think of. And I love that, but I don't take advantage of it. I just basically use this to push and pull stuff and organize the re repos in a little bit more organized fashion, I guess. If I could say organized about five more times in that sentence, it would be great. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's Grit Kraken. Like I said, I'm just kind of scraping the surface of using it. I'm going to do a video on it pretty soon, but I want to be able to actually kind of dive into it and es explore some of the more uh, complicated features that I, even even if I wouldn't use those myself, that might be important to other people. So that's Git Kraken. I will leave links to all these in the video description below. So if you want to check out some of those applications, you can. And I would love it if in the comments below, you leave a few of your applications that you use that you couldn't live without because I think everybody has those applications that if they went away you'd be seriously upset and that's how I am with the ones that I have on the list and I'd love to hear about yours just remember don't leave any links because Google will you know delete those for spam reasons so if you want to follow me on Twitter you can do so at the Linuxcast you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Linuxcast and before I go I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Sven, East Coast Web, Chris, Mitchell, Mr. Fox, American Camp. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.